Hi there, Grade 12s. Um, this is the Engineering Graphics and Design Guidelines for the Practical Assessment Task 2021. Uh, this presentation will take you through the entire EGD PAT Part 1 only, up until the designs. If you watch this video very carefully, you will know exactly what to do. This presentation uh, comes as matriculants are all facing the engineering graphics and design PET and having much difficulty with the PET as it uh, contains a lot of detailed information. So this video is there to assist you in ensuring that uh, the PET becomes a really easy task. Remember the PET must be done with absolute, absolute accuracy and complying to all the necessary specifications so that you can uh, draw maximum marks from that pet. The pet amounts to 100 marks, which is 25% of your total mark for engineering graphics in grade 12. This presentation uh, has been compiled uh, in conjunction with the Education Department, presented by the New Dimensions School of Design. Uh, my voice is going to be the voice which will be um, present during the presentation, allowing you to uh, focus on what needs to be done. I somehow want to introduce some of the documentation you will be able to use during this PET. Um, by now you should have the instruction manual which I'll be looking at and then I will introduce a few other documents which I've compiled as well as uh, part of your assistance and then uh, I've got this presentation which highlights everything um, regarding the PET. Let me introduce the documents to you. Um, just bear with me as we make our way through the various slides. This is the instruction manual which directly comes from the department which you should have in your possession either in hard copy or in uh, electronic version and this is an electronic version on my PC and basically gives you only the part which you are going to do which is uh, the practical assessment task civil design project um, there is a lengthy paragraph which you need to read which we are going to go through and um, we will unpack every single detail in that specific paragraph that paragraph entirely looks at this specific stand here and the focus around this stand and uh, the future plans of what needs to be designed. Then of course uh, we're going to look at the phase one presentation where we're going to unpack all these components starting at number one, looking at your paragraphs, uh, looking at your specifications, and conducting research and then we will look at uh, our possible solutions which we need to design making use of the grid paper which will be provided and I will make a concerted effort to show you in detail how the grid paper can be used alternatively where you draw either on the grid paper or you may use the grid paper as a backing and use a blank sheet on top of that. All right. Then I have a engineering graphics and design template of the pet, how the layout of the pet should be. Um, you can either get hold of this in electronic version. It's in Word format, so you can actually manipulate every single page in this document which I have designed and made available to various students. Uh, whoever gets hold of this document can either print it. If you don't have access to computers, you may print it and write on, physically write on this document. And this document basically is the computerized version um, where you can also type in all the information needed to comply with the phase one component of the pet. All right, uh, and I will show you quickly how to manipulate this document running through the various instructions which we will look at very closely. 
So as we make our way through the slides, um, this is the site plan that in your instruction manual and every single um, component in your specification revolves around this specific site plan. So what we're going to do, we are going to read the lengthy paragraph and I'm going to allow a computerized reading and then we will unpack each of those components in the paragraph so that we can derive at the best possible solution. Your client owns Stand 82, a property situated on top of a steep embankment overlooking a river which lies on the southeastern side. The river forms the boundary between your client's property and a nature reserve on the opposite side of the river. All the properties on the northwestern side of the river are ideally situated to observe the animals as they come down to the river to drink. The client is in the final stages of acquiring Stand 81 and Stand 83, the two adjacent properties to Stand 82. These three properties will form part of an upmarket timeshare resort in the near future. Before the timeshare units for the resort are developed, your client wants you to design an enclosed single-story brick structure containing the general reception area for the resort and a day spa, which will initially be used to attract potential investors. In this project, the structure will forthwith be referred to as the building. The proposed new building must be sited between the municipal sewerage line and the southeastern building line, and it must have a modern entrance with a large doors that faces Blessbach Street. The large doors must lead into the general reception area, which must have ceilings that are at least 4 m high and a floor area of no less than 65 square meters. To create one larger open area where guests can sit to enjoy eats and drinks, the reception area must have aluminium stacking doors that open onto an 80 square meters timber deck which overlooks the river below. The timber deck must have a secure railing of 1 m high on all sides, and to ensure that the building is disability friendly. All the floors and the timber deck must be on the same level. Leading off the general reception area must be a small coffee shop, an administration office for the resort, male and female toilet facilities, as well as the entrance to the day spa. Using standard-sized aluminium stacking doors, the small coffee shop must open into the reception area. As the coffee shop will only be selling non-alcoholic beverages and pre-prepared food on the go, it only requires space for a large display fridge, preparation, and serving counters, and a double sink, and may therefore not exceed 12 square meters. The female toilet facility must have a toilet and a hand wash basin, and the male toilet facility must have a toilet, a single wall-mounted urinal, and a hand wash basin. The total area of the day spa section of the building, which will be expanded at a later stage, may not exceed 100 square meters. It must consist of an open area with a small indoor pool, a treatment room of at least 12 square meters, a small staff room with a built-in counter, and a single sink, as well as a change room. The open area must be large enough to also serve as a reception and seating area exclusively for the clients of the day spa. The change room must have a separate toilet, a hand wash basin, a shower, a wall-mounted bench, for lockers and ample space to change. The building must have a pitched roof designed in such a way that it will also cover half of the timber deck. Due to the high humidity levels next to the river, the roof covering must be of aluminium sheeting, and aluminium window and door frames must be used throughout. All the rooms and areas in the building must have sufficient electrical lighting and switch socket outlets, and all the rooms facing outwards must have windows that will let in ample natural light. All sewerage and wastewater pipes from the building must be connected to the existing municipal sewerage line on the property. The entire building, including the timber deck, may not exceed 280 square meters. End of question. So now that you've heard the reading of the paragraph, I want to start at the very beginning, and that beginning would be um, looking at your cover page of your pet this is a very important component because as it serves as your window uh, to your pet and uh, these are the specific things that must appear on your pet assignment and that is your school name the subject engineering graphics and design fully written out the project which is 
the practical assessment task, which is abbreviated as PAT. There should be a picture on there, and that picture, specifically as mentioned in the PAT, should be your perspective drawing, which you are going to do later on in part two and part three, which has to be imported into your computerized sheet, and then um, basically paste, paste it into your um, cover page. Um, should you not have access to computers, you might just take a photo of your drawing and uh, print it out and paste it onto your cover sheet. Then your name, the name of the learner should appear on there, what your name is and your surname. The grade 12 class, PT, whatever your grade, class, grade 12 class is. And then the year 2021 is very important and of course we need to have the name of your educator, the teacher involved in um, discussing the pact with you, the teacher who actually teaches you. This is very important uh, as many schools have different teachers and educators who present engineering graphics to their learners. So during the moderation process, the curriculum advisor would like to see the name of the educator on the cover sheet. So make sure that this all appears on your cover page of your pact. Let's look at what the uh, cover page should be looking like as an example. So here we have uh, an example of a cover page which we spoke about now. There's the name of the subject. That's your school name which you can manipulate and put in the practical assessment task. That's the picture we were talking about, about uh, regarding your perspective drawing which should appear on your cover sheet and all of the other data will appear on your cover sheet as well. That is merely an example of it. You can manipulate it in any sort of format, change the, the font, change the style, create a brand new one should the need be. All right, then of course, the next item in your pack, second to the cover page, will be your index page. We the entire pack is being uh, introduced and it starts with your design brief, your scenario and design brief where you have paragraph 1 and paragraph 2, your specifications, your constraints, your management plan, your research and the three components which you need to do research on, then your possible solutions with your freehand drawings, your freehand designs, the selection of the best possible design, your layout drawings, which would be your floor plan, your section elevation, your two other additional elevations, your site plan, which you have in your instructional manual, which must be copied, and finally 5.3, which would be your perspective drawing, which we spoke about. All of these things would be part of your indexed page. Let's look at an example. As page number two, here you can see that cover page which follows that would be this index page over here. Once again, you can manipulate it in any format that you want to using different um, fonts and sizes of your particular index page. So now we start with the actual activities and we're going to look at uh, number one here and all that information here will now be explained to you in the presentation format of the slide. So you have to write two paragraphs, you have to analyze the given scenario which was read to you and you have to write paragraph one firstly in your own words where you give a brief background of the project as well as a detailed description of what has to be design. These are the bulleted guidelines which you will uh, find in the presentation which must guide you to draw up or write a neat five line paragraph. Five lines or more. Doesn't matter who is the client and what is his business. So you will find that specific information in the first two paragraphs of your instruction manual. We, we just read the the lengthy paragraph, what must be designed, 
you need to elaborate what is the reason or reasons for this project where is the site situated and briefly describe it what is the future plan of this project pay careful attention to the first two paragraphs as I've mentioned and I want to go to that and show you where you might find some of these answers right here in this space over here the first two paragraphs of your instruction manual you are going to find most of those answers as guides to be able to write the paragraph that specific uh, paragraph will then be written in this space over here which has been provided your first paragraph there you will find so you will write your five or six or seven multi-sentence paragraph into this space over here right and then we're going to move to the second paragraph which you are going to write in here and we're going to look at the guidelines there so the second paragraph must be about the overview of your role in the project as well as a complete design process which you are going to follow to arrive at the proposed solution and that must all be in your own words um, you will have to basically elaborate on the fact that who you are and please here yeah, you can sell yourself in terms of occupation which you currently hold as a civil engineer or an architect or an architectural technologist or whatever uh, occupation you hold and the company which you're going to make up really um, using it in this paragraph so the company could be your surname construction or builders or designers whatever it might be it's something that you really have to to think about and make up so these uh, bulleted points here in terms of what you are going to do helps you to write the paragraph and to elaborate more than just what is given here um, as to how you are going to give a clear overview of your role so you are going to survey the site the site which has been allocated for this building to be designed on there it's going to be surveyed so you need to speak about how you're going to go out to the site and you are going to look at the site and you're going to level the site and you need to do some research in terms of um, finding out certain information you got to present uh, possible solutions to the client which is very important and those are sketches you have to do a layout drawing or layout drawings of the preferred solution which uh, the client has decided upon and then once you have all of that you need to compile a budget and you can make up what the budget is for this particular project and you also need to employ certain contractors to do the job and you will be looking at various boulders in terms of uh, bricklayers, plasterers, electricians, plumbers, landscapers, carpenters etc who will all be working on site under your supervision to be able to complete the building project so you must use these here to write a paragraph in that order giving a clear overview of your role and that will happen in this space as I've mentioned previously as your second paragraph there you can actually type it if you need to all in that space or you can write it draw lines and write neatly in that area over there once you've concluded that we are going to move to 1.3 here you are going to list 1.3 and 1.4 20 specifications and 5 constraints all in one go that is where you're going to find the instruction in your your manual where you must list a minimum of 20 specifications and a minimum of five possible constraints now the emphasis is here minimum but in this lengthy paragraph which you are going to be looking at here there will be many more than just the required 
25 and 5. So altogether we might have 30 specifications and constraints as com a combined unit. So we are going to look at those specifications and constraints um, in which the paragraph dishes up for us. And we've taken it unit by unit. Let's see what we can come up with. So we're looking at these different specs and we look first at our building as a whole. What needs to be done? So basically this must be done in bulleted format as it is here. The site must be built between the municipal sewer line and the southeastern building line. And I want to just show you where that is. That will be in this little space here. There's the municipal sewer line and there's the building line there. So in this space here. You will find on your site plan that there are different uh, contour lines situated here. Which basically means that there is a steep uh, section going down. There is a river here. Right? And animals will be coming to drink their water in the river here. This is the site that has been bought by the client. On the site there is nothing besides a few trees. And you will have the building line as it is indicated over here. You will have Blissbrook Street, which is 6 meters wide here on this side of the, the site. There is a vehicle entrance running here. There is an electrical supply box, which is there, which will eventually give electricity or supply electricity to the unit. And uh, there are corner heights as well. As I've mentioned, it is quite gentle here, where it's more or less very straight in level, but it does have a decline here, as it is uh, 440 height above sea level here, and it drops down to 420, which makes that the river that we will see there. Now, clients will probably have to sit somewhere around here in your building, on the deck, watching the river, how the animals will be coming to drink. Back to my building, as we are going to call it, as a unit. The modern entrance must be there with large doors, and it must face the street, Blissbok Street. There must be large doors, or a large door, which must lead into a general reception area. So we're going to speak about the reception area a little bit later. The building must have a pitch roof, which is basically a V roof like that, of which half of the roof should cover the timber deck, which we are going to be discussing a little bit later as well. The roof covering must be of aluminium sheeting, and both windows and door frames should be aluminium as well. We're moving to the next slide where all the rooms must have sufficient electrical lighting. There must be switch socket outlets inside the building. Rooms facing outwards must have windows that will allow for ample natural light to enter. The sewer and water Pipes must be connected to the existing municipal sewer line, and uh, which you will find obviously on your site plan. Um, and then, most importantly, the entire building, including the timber deck, should not exceed more than 280 meters square. So, you're going to work within 280 meters square when you design your building. So if we further unpack what the building entails according to our paragraph which was read, 
We're going to look at the reception area now and what it should be like. The ceilings of the reception area should not be lower than 4 meters. It should be at least 4 meters. The floor area should not be less than 65 square meters. It can be much bigger but not smaller than that specific size. And the reception area must have aluminium stacking doors and these uh, stacking doors must open up uh, into the uh, timber deck which we'll find adjacent uh, to the reception area. So just to be very clear that the reception area must open up into the deck or onto the deck um, by means of the aluminium stacking doors. Let's zoom in on our coffee shop now. Um, the coffee shop uh, should really open into the reception area as well. Um, there should be a large display in terms of a fridge for items which will be sold in the coffee shop. Then there should be a preparation and serving counters as well with a double sink. And the coffee shop should not exceed a size of 12 meters square. Very important. Let's look at our admin office. There are no specific specification for our admin office, but I have taken the liberty of compiling the four. There should be an office counter, perhaps, with a filing cabinet, an office desk for someone to sit at, and a chair, and there would probably be a computer where certain information will be stored. Let's look at our bathroom uh, facilities. Uh, it makes provision for male and female. In the male bathroom facilities, uh, there should be a toilet, a single wall-mounted urinal, and a hand wash basin. And in the female toilet, um, there should be a toilet and a hand wash basin only. We look at the spa. The spa should not exceed 100 meters square in size. It should be an open area with a small indoor pool somewhere inside the designated space. Um, the spa should also have a treatment room, basically of 12 meters square. There must be a small staff room with a built-in counter and a single bowl sink for the staff members working in the spa. Then there should also be a change room that contains a toilet, a private toilet, a hand wash basin, a shower, a wall mounted bench and four lockers and ample space to change. Part of all of this there should also be an open area which will, allow, which will allow for a reception section and seating area for clients of the day spa. That concludes all the information regarding the specifications as well as the constraints built as one. And all that information can be as units written or typed into the space that I will indicate to you now and there is the space you will find um, designated for the constraints in this space over here it will obviously take a lot more space than which is required um, or which is indicated in this area over here so you can type and as you type everything will move down into that space over there. Then we look at uh, 5.1. 5.1 is basically a management plan where I have taken all the components of the pack as it indicates in the index page and this time I've added another column where I will indicate the different dates I have tackled each of these specific topics. So, if today, if today is the 27th of April, I will merely just type in the 27th April 
2021 in there and so I will add all my dates as I make my way through the pact and this is just to indicate to us as educators and the department how the learner managed his time effectively and his days to be able to work through the pact so that's very important as well we turn our attention now to research which must be done and if you go to your your instruction manual you are going to find the three components which must be researched which I've taken out in my presentation here you need to look at designs and construction detail of aluminium stacking doors that's the first uh, research you will be doing because at the moment you might not be aware what stacking doors look like so we are going to find the designs and constructions of those and similarly we're going to look at design and construction detail of large timber decks and railings which you will be used when you are going to design as well and then thirdly you will look at designs of small indoor pools which will be used in the day spa as well then learners of course this last bulleted point is very important you need to include a list of references used in your bibliography when you are going to do research and you're going to copy things from uh, various websites it is important to uh, present the links and the websites in your bibliography to disallow plagiarism to take place as plagiarism is a very serious offense uh, and that basically just acknowledging that the work that you've copied from various sources and that you don't take ownership of that information. To give you an example of how the research can be done, how simply you can just download things from the internet and paste and copy it into the um, template, I'm going to take you through that process very quickly. So here you have 2.1 which is your first research. I am going to copy that entire piece of information there and I'm going to go to my browser which is Google and I'm going to paste it right in there. I'm going to find that various websites pop up. Um, I like this picture here that's my folding door that I have there I'm going to open it and copy the image right into my there I've copied my document my picture and I can basically just set it up in that specific space over there those are stacking doors um, it's very important as well to go back to the website and find that uh, link there and just copy that specific link uh, into your bibliography part which is going to be right there and there you have your link so I'm going to go back to my research page here maybe I want to add a bit of information at the bottom back to my browser I'm going to find some information we basically state what are aluminium stacking doors I'm going to click and I'm going to take this information which I have there copy it into my document right there Yeah, you can see how easily I can copy that information like that there and that would suffice for that specific research information I can go to my second one now where I'm just going to manipulate my page to make it one research component per page and I can apply the same principle as I've done with the first research component Once I've concluded my research, I will go on to the next part of my 
pet which is design one and design two and this is a very important component this is where we actually going to transfer that those specifications over into a design where we have to make sure that all of those specifications are actually evident in our designs which we are going to present so you will have design one and you are going to have design two so two sp different designs basically with uh, complying to all the specifications and then of course the rest of it will be done later where you will select the best possible design using these descriptors here and scoring it according to that rating scale there in terms of good, above standard, average, below standard and poor standard um, and to conclude it with a total and that will guide you to the next part of your pact which is going to be phase two where we're going to look at your layout drawings of the specific design that you have chosen to take forward. Grade 12, I'm going to give you an example of how to do your first design of the 2021 pact and hopefully you can use this information that I'm going to share with you in terms of doing a few other designs. Um, this is how real designers actually operate in reality. I'm going to keep strict to the uh, specifications of the pact in terms of the different room designations that we should have as well as the sizes of the different rooms or venues um, in my specifications. Then I'm going to make use of my grid page as you see on my screen and it's important that you use the grid page because the, the grid page has been designed to give us a sense of proportion. So if you look at each of the blocks that we will have here, each block is basically a square meter. So from one line to another line is going to be a square meter because the scale that we are going to use is going to be the scale of 1 is to 100. Meaning that from here to there is 1 meter, that would be 2 meters that way and 1 meter this way, 1 meter. So every single block is a square meter so I can either use this grid page or alternatively I can use a blank sheet of paper A3 paper and place it onto my grid and allow the lines to shine through and then I can just use my white sheet of paper to be able to develop the design and then afterwards just take that paper away and the design will be visible there I'm going to show you um, on the grid paper as you won't be able to see my lines through a blank sheet of paper that I will be placing on this grid page. So when I look at my overall building, I want my overall building to be in this space over here. And as I approach the building from my car to enter the, the specific venue I need to walk into double doors which will be situated in my reception area now it clearly states that the reception area should not be smaller than 65 square meters so for 65 square meters I'm going to use a length and a breadth of 11 by 6 which will give me basically 66 square meters. With that I do comply with the specification that states it should not be smaller than 65. So I'm going to place my 65 block for my reception area on my grid page and I'm going to start slightly higher round about there so that it will fit perfectly into this space and in the center when I do my design. Right so let's start round about here this is my middle and I'm going to put 11 blocks, which is going to be 11 meters right here. So I'm going to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I'm going to go up 6 meters and that's going to be 6 blocks. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I'm going to just close it up like that to form my 11 by 6, which is 66 square meters. I'm just going to use my lines very dark for you to be able to see, but I am going to later erase parts of the line to add my doors and my windows. Once I'm in my reception area, I must be able to access the timber deck on the one side. So I'm going to put my timber deck on this side of my reception area and of course I'm going to find the stacking doors which will be situated in this wall over here. So the specification for your timber deck would be that it should not be bigger than 80 square meters. If you take 9 by 9 you're going to get 81 so I'm going to take 9 by 8 which will give me 72 which basically falls within the 80 square meters. So I'm going to go 8 blocks to this side which is going to give me 8 meters and I'm going to go 9 blocks up which is going to be giving me the 72 square meters. So. That's 8 meters, and then I'm going to go 9 blocks up. That's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then I'm going to close it like that, and that will form my deck. So I'm going to come into my reception area, and I'm going to walk through the stacking doors, and I'm going to find my deck right here. And on this side, I'm going to have my river, my decline, and then my river, which the animals will come and drink water. Um, while I'm at the timber deck, I'm just going to add some tables right there for my timber deck and I can space them neatly apart on my timber deck. That's where people are going to have seating available for them to enjoy some beverages. And there I've done nine tables. All right. Then I'm going to look at my coffee shop, which is my third venue. Now, they say that the coffee shop should also have stacking doors and, and it must have access from the reception area. So I'm going to find that coffee shop anywhere in this space preferably because as I enter I will be able to access the coffee here or there and then go on to the deck. So the coffee shop has to be 12 meters square. It can't be bigger than 12 meters square. So 12 meters square is going to give me 3 meters by 4 meters. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 and then there will be 4 meters like that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three will give me 12 meters for my coffee shop. Then next to the coffee shop, I need to have an admin office, which I'm going to design very small. I'm going to use a three by three, which will give me nine meters. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm just going to close it up there to formulate my nine meter square admin office. And it's also center to all activities and then, of course, you need to have uh, bathroom facilities, both for men and women, or males or female. And I'm going to put that in here as well to form as a block, which is also going to be 3 meters by 4 meters, which basically is the same size as my coffee shop. And I sort of bring some equilibrium into my design, where I have my bathroom facilities here of 12 meters and my coffee shop of 12, meet, 12 meters there and in the middle I will have a 9 meter admin office. I now turn my attention to the day spa and I'm going to put my day spa on this side here. It clearly states that the day spa should not exceed a square meter of 100. Um, I already have 9 here so if I use 11 meters on this side, I will get um, an absolute 99 meter square, which is perfect within my 100 meter square specification. So 
I'm going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 meters and I'm going to go 9 meters up which forms a perfect rectangular shape on the side of my building and that area now would formulate my day spa. If you look at our day spa area there are three venues that should be part of your spa that includes a treatment room of 12 meters square so I'm going to take the four meters that we have here and block it off with three meters like that and that will formulate my treatment room according to my specifications of 12 meters square and then it should have a small staff room for those workers in the day spa where they need to make their coffee and just relax during break times so I'm going to make that a 3 meter by 3 meter staff room which is suffice for the amount of people uh, working there and then the remainder would just be a 12 meter square area as well which will serve as a change room then is now that I've allocated all the different venues according to my specifications to my design I'm going to inflate the lines by drawing my walls and that would be a thicker line on the outside for my load bearing wall which is going to equate to 3 millimeters and I'm going to have my inside walls here of 1 millimeter apart. Let me show you how to do that quickly. I've added my, my walls on the outside and remember I've used a line on the outside of my frame that I had and uh, I will not draw any walls around this area over here as that is just a railing that you will find with the different supports on each of the corners. What I will do next is I will create some entrance and exit points for example I'm going to put a double door a large double door with large double doors here to enter I'm going to have stacking doors on this side here preferably in the middle here and then I'm going to have stacking doors here for my coffee shop I'm going to have a single door here for my admin office for the bathrooms I'm going to divide this into two parts now so that I have male and female bathrooms and entrances to those bathrooms then I'm going to have an entrance and exit point here in terms of a double door here the normal double doors here for my spa area and then single doors in each of these cases for the treatment room the staff room and the change room let's do that quickly
come into my reception area I can go onto the deck right here I can move and find myself in the coffee shop I can go to the admin office I can have um, I can go to the different bathrooms if I need to I can I can access the spa and I can go to the different venues in the spa right let's add some details I'm now going to examine each of the specific venues and what needs to be inside according to the specifications um, and you can just follow the different sizes in terms of the blocks as it's presented on this page. Remember half a block will equate to half a meter. So if we look at our coffee shop, in our coffee shop there should be a large display fridge, a preparation and serving counter as well as a double bowl sink. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my display uh, fridge over here in this corner over here and I'm going to have a counter here at the back with a sink and then I'm going to have a serving counter right in this space over here. Let's do that quickly to furnish the detail of the coffee shop. no real specifications for what should be in the admin office I'm merely going to put a table and a shelf or a cabinet on this side and perhaps a cabinet on that side for filing purposes and a chair at the back of the table let's do that at our bathroom facilities the one is a female and the one is a male bathroom in the male bathroom facility you are going to find a toilet a water closet which is a private one so I will have a demarcation there and there must be a urinal against that wall and a wash basin against this wall over here and in the female toilet this should be a private cubicle water closet as well as a hand wash basin. Let's do that quickly. no specific uh, specifications for the treatment room but I am going to put a massage bed in here as well as a cupboard that will store all products The 
The small staff room should have a counter with a single bowl sink and perhaps I'm going to put some seating as well for the workers to be able to enjoy their coffee during their lunch break. Let's do that. learners in the change room which is this venue over here there should be a separate toilet a hand wash basin a shower a wall mounted bench four lockers and ample space to change so in this corner here I'm going to put my separate toilet and I will have my seating here as well and some lockers which I'm going to put in there um, so that and a shower as well. Learners and finally in the open area of the day spa it should cater for a small pool of which I'm going to have a size of 3 meters by 5 meters which is ample in that space and then of course you should have seating in the reception area which is going to be this area over here as people arrive exclusively for the clients of the day spa I'm going to add that to my drawing as well The next step, I'm going to move and add my ventilation in terms of my windows in each of the specific venues. The bigger the venue, the bigger the window size. Then of course here in front, I'm going to allow for bigger size uh, windows which will serve as displays and those windows will be from full level until ceiling height.
Dennis, I've added all my windows. I'm going to highlight my outside lines of my walls and then I'm going to add in my dimensions as well and I'm going to add a legend for all my labeling right here at the top or at the bottom and I'm also going to work out the different square meters of the deck, the reception area as well as the day spa.
The great twelves I've concluded my entire design. It takes a lot of time and effort, but that will score you full marks. And remember when you go to your second design, you can however just move these little square blocks and rectangular blocks around to be able to come up with a best possible solution. Uh, a second best possible solution and of course you can move the doors so that it's free flowing and has many entrance or has um, perfect entrance and exit points and uh, just to give you a few ideas of what you possibly could do as designs you can have your building say our first or second design could obviously be where you have your reception area like that there and you have your spa area on this side and you have your deck that will come around that space over there, your coffee shop being here your entrance there and other components can be here as well and then that would be your entrance for your spa with your three other venues in there that could be another option a third one probably could be where you have the deck over there and of course the middle section over there and you can have your spa right over there as well in that format or you could alternatively have another option where you have your deck here and you have your middle section little bit of recess, little bit recessed um, and you're going to have your spa section over there so you will have your entrances here with other components here and perhaps components here or on that side. Preferably on this side here as you will be having your main entrance here. So those are possible designs that you could opt as a second option. So learners, I hope that you are going to find much worth in this uh, pet explanation and you will come up with a really great pet which will afford you an opportunity to score a really good mark. Thank you very much for listening and I hope you enjoyed the video.